And we're back. Okay, so what's what's next up on the list? So we got our shin guards and we got our mask. Um, at this point, you're decently good. Something else I would consider looking into is your shoes. So a lot of people um, will come in and they'll be wearing athletic uh, trainers, so you know, running shoes, etc. I find those way too overbuilt, and usually the thicker the shoe when it comes to the type of footwork we're doing fencing, there, there's just some dicey ankle stuff that, that nearly happens. And sweet lord above, don't be wearing you know boots or things like that if you're not fencing outdoors. That's just crazy. But the shoes that I would say are pretty good are one, I've got, I've got these guys, and I can't remember what these guys are actually from. Um, I think they're just some kind of um, thinner running shoe. I had a set of these that I wore forever until they literally rotted off my feet, and I just got this new set. They're pretty sweet. They're very thin, which is nice. Um, having a thinner shoe in general that moves with your foot, really, really good for HEMA. Um, and they tend to stick pretty well to carpet or to um, gymnasium floor, which is what we mostly fence on. However, these are the guys that I wear when I'm actually um, competing or free sparring, which is their wrestling shoes. Um, You'll, you could also find some that are boxing shoes. Quite a few of my guys love these to death. Um, they're pretty easy to find, be them on Amazon or, or at a, at a uh, sport retailer. But they're great because, one, they extend up on the ankles, so they give that support. Two, they're very, very thin and give you a lot of good traction. So these are pretty fantastic. Um, so, yeah, look into, look into the idea of, of wrestling or boxing shoes or, or other thinner footwear, I would say. If you need the more support, then yeah, you might want to stick with trainers for a while, but I just, it makes me nervous every time I see someone in those and they take a sideways step and their ankle starts to go, it's just, yeah. Anyway, okay, so looking into your shoes, that's always a good thing. Um, something I, I didn't really talk about and I didn't really lay out for you is the underlayer, so trousers, essentially. Now, pretty much everything in HEMA is going to require tall, ridiculous socks, so we'll go from the foot up. Um, reason being that most of our gear only comes down to our knee. Now, this is for a couple reasons. One is because we wanted that distinguishable look, um, that, that historical look that we were, we were going for. Uh, two is because of the increased mobility, because it's essentially like I'm in shorts, but they cover my knee. Um, so tall socks are, are pretty much a must. I wear compression socks because I, I stand up for long periods of time when I'm roughing or judging. Um, that and you can find some really fun compression socks, so my space socks. Um, Colors are encouraged. Uh, school uniform for my students who are curious is everything but all black. Most people go for the, the red, the white, the blue, black, or, or yellow, or I suppose there's the orange um, off of the banner. It's whatever. As long as it's not all black, wear some colored socks and be proud. Um, as for the trousers themselves, I wear the Absolute Force fencing knickers, um, and they're, they're basically just, you know, a HEMA edition of them. They've got um, they've got, what are they called? Suspenders, uh, elastic suspenders that I can pull up over my shoulders. Um, they have a back pocket, which is super convenient. Um, but they're, they're pretty thin, so if I'm fencing in competition, I'll wear a size bigger one and fit motocross stuff underneath. Um, most people, however, will go for the Spez trousers. They're a little bit bulkier. They've got much more padding here on the leg, which is nice, um, but... I also find they don't fit very well. Uh, even, even if they do fit you decently well, it's just it's, it always has a sort of baggy look. I don't know. They're very good, very protective. Um, it's kind of personal preference, but those are not required, really. I mean, you can do most everything you need to do in just a pair of long track pants, and do not wear shorts if you want to go to a competition. Okay? We're cracking down on it a lot more, and I can tell you that if you come up to my gear check personally, I will give you hell for wearing shorts. I don't care if it's hot, it's about not exposing your skin, okay? So, if you're going to wear tall, if, if you're practicing, then you should be wearing tall socks with your shorts anyway, okay? Because it guards that skin. Anyway, rant aside, um, trousers relatively, I'm not going to say trousers optional, Spez or, or HEMA specific trousers optional, long track pants are just fine. Okay, so we've got most of the lower body and you know, the very, very upper body. So now let's go into the next thing you might look into, which is arms and hands. So if you're fencing with synthetics, like there on the rack, then you can probably get away with just, just lacrosse gloves for the longest time. So there's a couple different kinds of lacrosse gloves that I've got here. Um, they're all fine, really. It's, it's, it's pretty much whatever. Um, if, if you're sparring lightly in your school, 
with nylons. Lacrosse gloves are just fine. Never use lacrosse gloves with steel. Um, that's just a surefire way to get yourself hurt. Um, some people have modified lacrosse gloves and made them tournament legal. I don't know how to do that, so don't ask me. Instead, what I advocate if you're going to protect your hands is go with the tried and true Spez Heavies. There is nothing, in my opinion, better out there. Um, the sparring gloves are pretty popular. Um, not the five-finger ones. Don't go for the five-finger ones. Go for the, the clamshells. Uh, those are pretty good. One of my, no, two of my guys wear those, and they're all right. Uh, just not my personal bag. So this is the older style of Spez Heavy. Um, back when they, they were still going off their original design. Now, these are not as rough as they look. Uh, people in my school, we, we cover them in tape so that it protects the rivets and it makes slightly less noise when it gets hit. Um, that's just, just a thing we do because we also like to use fun tape in different colors. But anyway, um, so these are not as rough as they look. But these were the old style of Spez Heavies and y you won't find these new anymore, I don't think. I think they've entirely phased them out. Um, but if you can get them secondhand, they're still perfectly protective. A newer set of Spaze Heavies, minus Space Tape, have some fun integrated designs. So for one, they've changed the cuff to leather. It extends a little bit further. Um, they use better ties holding it together, and they added this guy. So back in the day, we used to have to modify blast caps on it or run the risk. Now they have this right on the back, so it's, it's all great. Um, but it it's really protects your thumb. I mean, I feel safe as heck in these. Some people will complain they don't have a ton of mobility, but really all you need to do is, is wear them around, break them in. Something I like to do if I'm breaking a new pair of gloves is I'll take two ball bearings, I'll put them in my palm, and I'll circle them. They'll go around, around changing places. Those are really great for uh, doing that. Now, a set that I recently acquired that are pretty cool, and some of my students have asked me about them, so I'm going to go over them, are these. Um, these are the Age of Craft Visby gauntlets. Now, the reason I know what these are is, is, and had them come onto my radar is because one of my friends was wearing these at Long Point several years ago. And I saw them and I thought they were the shit. So I asked him to try them on. I liked them a lot. But the problem was you could only find these guys custom made from the, the maker himself who's in Eastern Europe. So these are originally designed for like Battle of Nations type stuff. You know, people whacking each other with reckless abandon. So... You know, the fact that they were tournament legal and that they have this five finger protection while being really, really robust, um, I was super interested. However, you couldn't find them for a long time, but now they're on Cult of Athena. Um, you, can, you can get them in both the mitten version or the five finger version. And what it is, is it's, it's metal plates and brigandine um, underneath this, this nice felt leathery cover. And these are pretty sweet. I would not wear these in competition personally, um, but for friendly sparring, or once again, if you're looking for a more historical look, these are pretty awesome. Um, the reason I like them is one, for that. Two, um, they're great for one-handed sparring, which I mostly do in a friendly context anyway. Um, and uh, they're great as if you're looking to get into armor, because they're, based, they're still gauntlets. They're totally gauntlets, so that's, that's pretty sweet. Um, but anyway, I might do a full like, breakdown of those later. So those are, those are the hand protection I recommend. For your arm protection, we have a couple different options. So um, most people will go for some sort of separate arm protection akin to this, which is these, I think these guys are from motocross. But uh, lacrosse um, also works really well. Anything that covers that elbow and most of your forearm, part of your upper arm isn't too bad anyway, uh, around the tricep, it's pretty nice to cover. Um, a lot of people go for these. These are the older version of the Spez wraparounds. Um, and they just wrap around your arm like, like a burrito and then uh, a fix. These days, it's hard to find these that don't connect to um, a set of elbows. So you're, you're pretty good in that regard. Um, no complaints about those whatsoever. There's also these guys. I think these guys are from, I don't even remember what these are from. Um, but they, they fit pretty well. So anything really that covers you and isn't going to shift too much, that's, that's solid. You need rigid forearm and elbow. Um, so these little guys, however... So, on my motocross set, which we'll talk about in a minute, this is my forearm protection from my elbow to my forearm, but it doesn't extend all the way to the wrist. So I need something to cover that gap. These guys, um, they're from an Evo shield? I don't know. But um, they are plates that you mold to your forearm, and then they hold that shape forever, and they just slip on like a pair of bracers. They cover that gap, and these things are amazing. They're designed for... Um, Baseball, in case you get hit with the ball right next to your hand. Um, and they're fantastic. I've taken a shot directly 
onto them with a sword, and no big deal, really. It, I mean, it stung a little bit, but my arm is not broken. I don't really get bruised on my arms anymore, uh, knock on wood, but those, those guys are fantastic. Okay, so, but any, anything else from uh, uh, lacrosse or, or I, think, I think I've seen some hockey guards or things like that would be great. So that's your forearms, that's your legs, that's your hands, your feet, and we've got our, our throat and head and all that. So let's talk about the big one, which is your torso. So there's varying different levels of protection you can go for your torso, kind of depends upon your setup. I've got three, technically four, different setups here. So let's go for the more common one, which is the gambeson. So back in the day, gambesons were pretty rare. These days you can get them custom made, no problem. And apologies for the look of this one. It's not as disheveled as it looks, it just has grease on it. Um, you've got two different forms of gambeson here. Both of these are from Spez. Um, we've got the modern AP uh, style. <laughs> And we have now the AP Light, which is this, but meant to be a little more mobile, which is new and cool and exciting. Um, and then we also have this, which is the historical pattern for Spez. Um, you can also find Gamesons from people like uh, Naaman and who else? I don't know. Brands are eluding me. I will, I will write out a whole list for, for my students who are curious and, and list as many as I can. Um, but general things you want to be looking for when you're looking in a Gamison is mobility, um, practical protection, and um, <laughs> you also need to consider heat. So some people I know that were wearing gambesons for a while um, would actually punch holes in the back of their gambeson for more um, air. It was, it was crazy, and you could actually see the heat coming out of it like an exhaust pipe. But anyway, um, so modern, well, let's, go, let's go over this guy first. So this guy, I grabbed him because um, there was a sale on Spez, and it was a medium, which would fit me. And I wanted something for under my armor, which didn't quite fit me very well at the time. So their, their historical pattern is it's literally like a gamison would be. It's just got ties that go through the hole and no bells or whistles, nice and simple. You could totally wear it in modern competition. Only downside being that it doesn't zip up super conveniently, but it works just fine. No real complaints. If you're part of a school that's looking for a more historical look, then this guy is, is awesome. Um, as for the more modern version, so like I said, this is the original AP, not the AP Lite. I haven't gotten the chance to handle an AP Lite personally up close and see what changed, but I'm also not a big Gambison fan. Um, so, Velcro here that opens up, zipper um, that extends all the way down. It's, it's really no bells or whistles, to be honest. Um, if you're going to wear a Gambison, make sure that your gorget is small enough that it fits under the Gambison. You don't want anything too ob obtrusive. Um, you're probably going to have to layer on top with your forearm and elbow protection, which fortunately Spez makes stuff that works well for that, as opposed to underneath because there's just less room. Um, these are these are pretty good. These are standard essentially. Um, everyone and their grandmother and Hema has worn a gambeson at one point or another. Um, so those are pretty good, uh, pretty affordable, and if they don't fit you exactly, you can get them custom made for not too much more, and you can get custom colors, which I highly encourage. Um, so those are pretty good. The other setup that you're seeing a lot these days is this. This is the Spez Officer Jacket. I love this thing. Um, I got it because I wanted a lighter jacket um, compared to my, my motocross setup that would be great for rapier or for um, backsword, which is two of the, the main things I do. So I grabbed this guy, and you do see these in longsword tournaments quite a lot. Um, I don't think that's a terribly good idea, but, you know, people do what they do. It's... One of those that you can layer over or under, kind of depends. They're not terribly thick. They're plenty protective. They're fantastic if you're fencing with a one-handed sword. Um, but how it works is you've got, and I love this thing to death, um, you've got this side goes underneath like a double-breasted jacket. They actually tie together. Uh, I don't know where the tie went. Oh, there it is. Um, they tie together, so you can, you can fashionably undo the top if you need to breathe. It's pretty cool. Um, you zip them up, and then you just button them over, and that's, that's awesome. Um, you get these in, in different kinds of colors. You can have that nice rim a different color. You can change the button color, etc. These are pretty cool. <clears throat> Not sure I'd advocate them for longsword, but they do the job. Um, for one-handed, definitely. Now we come to my setup. Now, my setup is a little bit complicated. <laughs> Um, so I'm a very, very skinny in individual, as you know from my other videos. So when I was getting into it, 
one, we didn't have a lot of the specialty stuff that I just showed, so it was kind of a bit of Mad Max Raider type, throw your stuff together and, and go witness glory. So we had to kind of go with whatever we did. As a skinnier guy, I wanted more protection on my torso. Um, we, I, I, didn't, I couldn't get a gamma set at the time, so I wanted more protection. And um, my school that I was learning out of, the VAF, we had these. Now these are JF jackets. So this is an original Jess Finley from Fulin Designs. Uh, they sold the, um, well she sold the design to Spez, who now make Spez JF wrestling jackets and JF fencing jackets. Fencing jackets are the ones with the buttons, wrestling jackets are not. And they're awesome still, I love them, I love them. Um, but uh, my school had a, a deal with Jess, so we, we got these guys in all the time, um, and this was just kind of standard uniform. So most people at where I learned, we layered up underneath or layered uh, um, up over. Kind of depended. Um, I went for the underneath route. So what I did is I got a medium JF jacket, so it got a little bit, so it had a little more room. And then I use a paintball vest as my initial layer. So paintball vests are pretty awesome as, as chest protection because they're relatively mobile um, and they can certainly take a punch without having the, the issues of the, the plastic plaster and where it gets in the way. <laughs> Um, so I like these a lot, and this one's a little bit beat up, but there are other newer versions that are, they're pretty sweet. Um, so I, I wear one of those, and then I wear it underneath my motocross armor. So, this motocross armor, um, is only popular in the SCA, actually, as I found out recently, but I have heavily modified this over the years, partly because it breaks, partly because, um, I needed certain things done, but I love this so much, um, it protects all of the bits I need protected, um, with the paintball vest under it, mind you. Um, cause that covers down here and my kidneys and stuff like that. These guys protect my chest very, very well. The shoulders and stuff, they're excellent. Um, I've only ever seen one of these plates break like once. Um, comes down pretty far. Depending upon the version you have, it might actually send all the way to the elbow. Mine didn't, so I had to modify and add a little bit of padding here. Built-in forearm protection so you can never forget it. Um, ugh. on the back. If you take a fall in a tournament or someone hits you in the back because they're a douche, you're good. Um, I actually removed the top plate because uh, it wasn't needed and it was forcing my head forward a little bit, so I advocate doing that. But this guy is great when you get knocked over or thrown onto um, you know, concrete or something like that. It's, it's way better than just landing. So I like that setup personally. It's not everyone's bag. Um, some people have gone kind of back to this. Um, some people, they... They scourge it and don't think it's it's very safe protection. I like it. I've been I've been fighting in in that setup specifically for almost nine years now. Um, competitional and friendly, and it's it's never let me down. So I like it. Um, some people have taken that idea and, and modified it. So like they've taken the arms off and used different protection and, and things like that. It's whatever. Um, and if you ever think you need to wear something different, you can just mix and match, see what works, but in general, these are three different versions, well, four technically, of setup of modern tournament torso protection. You really just kind of take your pick. If you're a skinnier guy, I mean, you're going to end up probably needing a custom gambeson, so I tend to advocate the motocross. So a lot of my students wear loner motocross, um, and then get a gambeson or something later. Kind of depends. It's really nice if you live in a particularly hot area, because you just unzip and the, the mesh breathes pretty well but either way I've been prattling on for too long that's a basic overview of protective gear um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that I didn't cover in the comments um, for my students I'm going to send out a note that has more listed brands and, and prices and things like that this was just a visual aid um, now I didn't go over swords because frankly Swords are a long-term investment. I will talk about them in a video soon, but otherwise, thank you guys for listening and watching. I hope that was helpful, and we'll talk about protective gear and swords and HEMA another time.